Greetings YouTube, welcome to my latest weapons build. Technically this isn't a weapon, this is actually going to be a buckler. Uh, what I have here is an aluminum bowl. The edge on this, uh, using my vernier calipers, is uh, two, uh, 0.230, so 230 thousandths of an inch thick. And I figure that the bowl wall is probably the same all the way around. I don't see any reason they would not make it a fairly even. This probably started out as a single flat piece of metal. Um, Maybe they stamped it, maybe they molded it, I'm not sure, but I, I would make it the same thickness all the way around. And it's not particularly light, it's got, it's got a nice heft to it, though it's not unbearable. It's definitely lighter than a piece of steel that would be the same thickness. And I just happened to luck into this. Uh, I found it at a thrift shop, I don't know who made it, um, but uh, like I said, I happened into it. It was six bucks, and I saw this, I'm like, that's the perfect size, because that's my hand, that's a perfect size for a buckler. So I'm going to attach this in the middle here to act as a handle. Um, and this is just a standard like shed handle kind of thing. You can buy that at any big box store. I like them because obviously they're, they're handle shape and they've got your clearance automatically built into it. But I also like the fact that it's got this, which I will then put a piece of tubing or maybe a piece of scrap uh, from handle or something in there just to thicken it up and then I'll wrap the whole thing in duct tape just so it gives you a little bit more of a comfortable grip and having that groove in there automatically centers it. Um, so this was six bucks at the thrift shop and this was six bucks new. I have run out of used ones. I had a number of them over the years that I picked up cheap, but they're gone. <laughs> I've used them for projects. Um, so I had to pay six bucks for this. I will be drilling, uh, Drilling out these two holes, they're just a bit too small. I need to be able to pass a quarter inch rivet through there and they will not do that at the minute. Um, so I will uh, do that first on this. Then I'm gonna need to bend this whole thing. And once I bend it, I may have to open up that hole again. I'm hoping I could, don't have to, but um, just in case I get lucky and I'll do them while it's flat and I'll drill it out. And if I end up having it open up again, I can, it's not that big a deal. Um, but if I don't, awesome. Um, I want to get that this angle so that it sits as flat as possible in this. And once I have that situated the way I want it to, I will then mark the bowl itself, put a, a, a dot sit in there, and I'm gonna have to hand. I'm gonna have to freehand those. I will not get. I don't think I can. Maybe I can. Can I get this comfortably in my in my? Hmm. Can I figure out a way to comfortably hold this in my drill press? That's an excellent question. That may be a challenge. We'll find that out. Um, and then drill thing, two, thing, two holes through this, deburr said holes, and then I'm gonna use pop rivets to get to do this because I want a clean exterior look. So when, when, from the outside, all you're gonna see is two little circular discs, essentially, that's the outside of the rivet and the inside of the rivet. Uh, well, here, we'll mushroom here, but again, it's on the inside. I won't care. You won't see it from the outside. Um, and I thought I'd show off one of my latest acquisitions. This is a two and a half inch machinist device. Um, it's not particularly special, nothing to write home about, but it's in solid condition. I will take it apart and clean it up uh, before I uh, probably use it. But um, I picked it up at an antique shop for 10 bucks. Even, even though this is like a no-name Chinese thing, even that means I, w I paid half the price of, of what it would have been otherwise, 20 or $25 probably. So for 10 bucks, I couldn't say no. I saw it, my wife pointed it out to me actually. She said, you see that vice on the floor? And I looked down on it and it was $10 and I'm like, okay. Actually, I think I got it for less than that now that I think about it. They were having a 20% sale that day. So I think I got this for eight bucks. Yeah, because I paid cash. All righty. Awesome. So I paid eight bucks for that. That's even a better price. Um, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is open up the holes in this handle and then uh, start working on getting the angle the way I want it to so that it doesn't do that. <laughs> and before I go drilling holes in this thing, get a listen to this. I actually got a pretty nice tone. But in a minute, it's not gonna, because I'm gonna put a holes in it and then put a handle on it. And that will ruin the tone. But I thought it was pretty cool before I go ahead and do that. I've got the two holes marked. This is now bent the way I want it to be bent. So that should be, I didn't have to use any tools. That was just stick it to my vise and pull on it until it bent it the way I wanted it to. Um, so now I'm going to see if I can get this to work in my drill vise, in my, my drill press rather, my drill vise. My drill press, that would be cool if I could. So that would make my life a little bit easier because it would give me more control and I like control when it comes to drilling holes. 
Since I am down in my shop by myself, it means I only got two sets of hands, I have set this up here um, with some duct tape to hold everything in place while I get that first rivet in. Once I get the first rivet in, I will not have to worry about because that will have hold, held the thing in place and then I can put the second rivet in. Um, but right now I, can, I only got two hands, so this is going to be my temporary clamp. I'm not going to set this up into a vise so that I can hold the whole thing together just sturdy enough so I can get that popped. And once that's popped, it should be tight. So this is just like sometimes you have to make temporary clamps to where you can and sometimes the fastest way to do that is just grab your favorite roll of duct tape. And here we have the completed project. Super simple and actually using my uh, drill press was actually quite simple. I was able to actually just put this under the drill bit, just keep the drill bit fairly low um, so I didn't have much travel and then uh, just uh, held it in place and just went very carefully. That's one of the beautiful things about aluminum. It drills like a charm. So there we go. We have uh, duct tape holding a little piece of uh, dowel in there. It's, it's, a, I, it's a shaft of, I can't remember right, uh, what it is. It, it looks like broom handle, but it was it's like seven feet long. I don't remember where I bought it. I don't know what it was originally, but it, it, to me it's just wood. So I'm just, there, 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 there's the grip and I use silver duct tape so it blends right in. Um, and I gave the, the, the front a little bit of a polish with some brasso, uh, bring that shine up as much as I could. Uh, so this is another really low skill style of uh, project. Now I realize this is kind of, I mean, you have to find the bowl to make this thing, I get that. But I have seen many things at thrift shops that could be used in a similar concept. And the idea here, again, is within my, the, my wheelhouse, my aesthetic, is the post-apocalypse. So you're making do with what you got. And you may have a bowl like this, or you could find other types of pans that are round, or even the square one would work if uh, you were to set it up so it's a probably a diamond profile. So you'd have the have the this with the points there. That would still make a viable uh, buckler in my book, uh, and give you the opportunity to make some point strikes if you wanted to with the with the, with the corners. Um, but this kind of thing is what I do. This is my hobby. And this is just, it was just perfect. I saw this and I'm like, this is gonna make an awesome buckler. And it is, it is a really, it's, got, it's, it's not too big, it's not too heavy. Um, I'm not particularly strong, but someone who is, who has training in, in, in uh, you know, fighting with a buckler uh, would have no problem using this whatsoever. And it's just, it's right there. Now I realize that a lot of the, some of the traditional bucklers that would, would have been carried like in an urban environment would have been smaller than this. That would have been a smaller diameter, um, but they all would have been made of, of steel. And those were very small. And they were, they were small enough you could hang them off the handle of your sword. So you actually hang, hang, hang them on the grip of your sword, which is at your belt. So you always have your buckler with you. Because while armor wasn't allowed, carrying a buckler around was pretty considered uh, much more um, reasonable. And it's still a defensive device. And if you know what you're doing, a buckler um, this size or smaller can still be very useful for strikes, for blocking. Um, I've actually seen, seen people use them for uh, uh, holds and disarming actions if you're very talented. Um, what you can do with one of these things is really quite astounding if you've got the skill. Um, <laughs> I do not have said skill. I do, however, know how to look at an object and figure out I can turn that into something else. And this something else in this case was uh, this. So for 12 bucks, I've got a new buckler. I'm going to take it upstairs and have my wife get a picture of me with it. Because um, I think it's kind of cool. And uh, I think that may be the project for the day. I'm kind of a little bit on the tired side. It's my long day. I got out of work at 7 o'clock this morning, so I, uh, I don't want to stress myself out too much. Um, I may come back in here tomorrow and work on another project because my wife's working on Sunday. So I kind of keep myself out of trouble. Being in the basement, cutting up steel is, uh, is the best way I can do that. Alrighty, so thank you folks for stopping by and taking a look at my uh, latest video. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a pretty cool little build. Um, I'm quite happy with the way it came out. Um, if you don't follow me on DeviantArt, you should, because that's where I have a permanent home for all of my stills for my builds, uh, weapons and shields and things like that. And you should follow me on Instagram because I post cool stuff, bargains I find, uh, personal life stuff, and of course, cute cat pictures. A lot of those lately because we just recently got a cat, at least the time of this filming. We've had the cat for three months now, I think? Less than three months, about three months, I guess. His name is Dwight Henry Bones. You can blame my wife for that. Um, 
But yeah, uh, I love those kind of adorable little cat pics. I think they're quite entertaining. Alrighty, so thank you for being here today. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I hope you'll come back for the next one.